Let's go. 
Peace and blessings. That's a poo, everyone. Shalom. Atep. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Hebnen Facebook Live celebrating the winter solstice. And we're very excited tonight to have this platform and to introduce to you a very special person, the winter solstice on Taui. If you haven't been to www.tauisolstice.com, make your way over there as you enjoy the stream tonight. My name is M. Tehuti Kamo, and I am privileged to be an Orwa in the Osara Set Society, initiated in the Osarian tradition over about 40 years now. Uh, it's been a true blessing to my life and the life, lives of thousands of people. And it all uh, was because of the great special guest that we have tonight to talk to you about a new program through which you can maximize the very important, very sacred time of year that we're in right now, the winter solstice and the following uh, month. So I wanna bring forth at this time and properly introduce Ra Unefer Amen the first, who is known as the Shechem or Shechem, that is the comedic title of the king in the Osarian tradition. Welcome, Shechem or Shechem. Thank you so much. Are you hearing me well? I can hear you well. I can hear you well. Wonderful to see you. And uh, we have an audience streaming over our Facebook presence, our uh, Nasut Mastam's Hetero Healing Group, our uh, Pennsylvania, Chicago branches, our Kentucky branches, our North Carolina branches, and many, many other people who have joined us tonight at this very sacred time. So Shechem Shechem, one of the most difficult things that I have to do is to introduce you, uh, given your incredible background. Uh, you started this venture, the Osaraset Society. Uh, you started teaching in the African community in 1973. So we're now celebrating 50 years of selfless service. Most of that instruction was free or nominal. 50 years of counseling people, individuals, everything from health consultations to family consultations to business to career decisions, uh, naming ceremonies, marriage ceremonies, funerary ceremonies. And uh, within the time of doing all of those things, you managed to write about 40 books, <laughs> including the uh, international bestseller, The Medunitaire uh, Seven Volume Set, Medunitaire Volumes One Through Seven. And uh, while you were doing that, I, I think I lost count, but you composed, um, I think about 80 or 90 um, musical pieces that are used in the meditation system that you have developed and refined over the last 50 years. Uh, you also went on to um, take us from Taoist yoga to other forms of yoga to, uh, to systematizing your own uh, Qigong form, the Ra Qigong system, as well as the Tree of Life system. So, um, it is a great honor to have you here tonight. I know some of you in the audience have never seen him in person. You felt his spirit through his books and his works, his lectures that you might have heard. Um, but I'm one of the few who has had the uh, privilege to uh, grow up with him since I was the tender age of 21. <laughs> so welcome, Shechem Shechem. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> and thank you for giving me the opportunity to share our teachings, our way of life with the community in general. <clears throat> so Shechem Shechem, as we begin tonight, um, a lot of people are uh, soul searching, they're looking for spirituality. Uh, a lot of us are not satisfied with um, the religious practices we've been exposed to 
and we're exploring all kinds of things. And I just wanted to ask you on behalf of the audience, how did you get started? What was, what was your journey like that led you from your early life, um, you know, your childhood and so forth? Where, where was it that you uh, started out on this path of spiritual development? Well, <clears throat> the number of things in my childhood that I can point to, you know, uh, I used to spend a lot of summers at my grandfather's house. And he had a book called The Imitation of Christ by Kempis, you know. And I, I was like 10 years old, I read the book. So I would spend a couple of days, I was in a, imitating Christ. according <laughs> <laughs> to what the book was saying. I said I was going to do it for a whole month. I did it for maybe two days and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years old, not, not much concentration. And also the spiritual exercises of, you know, uh, Loyola. I read through that book and I decided I'm going to do the spiritual exercises till I came across another book that says, you know, I dare you to go through, you know, a whole day without smiling. <laughs> so I left the spiritual exercises, so I thought, to go through a whole day without smiling you know, and I found it so difficult, and at the same time, it left me with so many questions. Why couldn't I stop smiling? How could I? How come I couldn't? You know, you know, uh, stop it, prevent it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was born in Panama, and there's an island in Panama called Saint Michael, San Miguel. You know, where the Africans that the Spaniards brought to the island, you know, they ran away to this island, and lived a very independent life. They, they, you know, they kept the customs, their language, their rituals. So I would spend a whole month every summer on that island. And I was, for many years, I, I was exposed to, you know, a, you know, genuine African culture, mm. you know, so that when, you know, I became older and in my late teens, early 20s, because something inside of me was looking for, you know, something spiritual, something deep, you know, something beyond, you know, what the Western world said life was about, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And I came across different books on spirituality and meditation and given my experience, you know, on that San Miguel Island, uh, something, you know, I had something to compare with. You know, also I trained as a, as a concert pianist. When time I was four years old, I studied piano for many, many years. And I went to minus, you know, uh, college of music and so on. And so I, I, when I used to focus on medit, you know, on memorizing the music, I would go into trance, into an altered state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So that when I began to study meditation, you know, somehow I re realized that what I was doing was very similar to what I was doing when I was focusing, you know, on meditating and getting into the music and the feeling on the music. So, you know, that led to many intuitive experiences. You see that? Mm -hmm. So, and then after a while, you know, you started to put two and two together. And, and what started me in my journey was, you know, in, in, when I was in music college, I met Sun Ra, the jazz composer and, you know, performer. Yes, yes. From you Philadelphia. Know, <laughs> yeah, and, and he asked me, you know, he says, um, so you're studying piano and composition, you right? Yeah, I said, yeah, you know, he says, but let me tell you something. If you want to go, if you want to write some real, you know, meaningful music, go and get yourself a book called The E. Gene. Hmm. And let that book guide you in writing music. <laughs> <laughs> so I ran and bought this book that was going to make me a great composer. <laughs> and I read through the book. The thought came to me and told me, you know, like, you know, go ahead and ask the aging, you know, um, what is your reason for being in this world? Mm. I said, well, I did the reading and I got the 26 hectare on top line stress that told me to give the music up and devote my life to spiritual development and helping others do the same. Wow. It took me three years of struggling with that, you know, that message. At, at first, I thought it was crazy. Until you know, I began to do readings to other people, and they come back and said, "Me, man, that reading, that that spiritual reading was on the money. <laughs> you know, hit the nail right on the head." And I said, "Here I am doing readings for people, and they're following with benefiting, 
and I am not living my reading. Mm -hmm. So one day I decided, you know something, just let me go ahead and do it. And, you know, that's why I'll be here tonight. Well, we want to give thanks to brothers, the spirit of Brother Sun Ra. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's so powerful. And uh, Shekhamah, Shekhamah, I can, I can remember when you were writing the Meduna Tear. And for some reason, I visited your home at the time. And um, you didn't have a spacious home. And you were sitting in your living room on the couch with a, uh, you know, like the TV dinner table, typing away at the computer. And uh, there was children running around, family running around. It was TV, music, all kinds of things were going on. People were just living in the house. And I, I you know, it didn't take me long when I opened that book. I, I could not imagine that you were able to write such a book and you didn't have to go to a mountain somewhere. You didn't have to go fast for 40 days. You know, oh, no, 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 I did. I did. I went to the mountain inside of me. Ah. <laughs> But, you know, as above, so below, what is in the world is within you. Mm -hmm. So you can just learn how to withdraw. And, and this intuitive ability, learning how to go within, is what enabled me to create a shadow set and teach it to people all around the world. Wow. Yeah. So before we get into the subject matter of the winter solstice, I just have one more question because a lot of us are wondering, you know, it's so hard to... Uh, let's say many people find it very hard to focus and to complete a task. And um, how were you able to write so many books and at the same time write musical uh, scores and at the same time manage the rest of your life? I mean, how is it, how is it possible for you to have that level of productivity? Well, it's, it's all about, you know, withdrawing your consciousness into the spirit mm -hmm. so that all type of external distractions, you know, and, and the, the, the hits of life, mm -hmm. you know, uh, make sure that these things don't knock you off center. You see that? So when, you know, I, I set my mind to bring forth a particular teaching to the world, that was my entire focus. Nothing would distract me from that. You see that? Mm -hmm. You see? And, and focusing on the thing is, is that you know uh, in the winter sources course that we are that I'm uh, going to be presenting in you know in a couple of days well it's, it's it's on now right I will teach people how to achieve that focus you see that mm -hmm. because when people sit down to meditate they try to use the will you know that intention you know ability to ignore intruding thoughts and feelings and sensations. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like using the will to make your blood pressure drop. Like, you know, imagine you're willing your blood pressure to drop. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. You have to use some bodily intermediate, you know, vehicle to lower, to carry it, to, 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 to bring that will to the blood pressure and or to the mind. You see that? Mm -hmm. And um, and that's what we've been teaching for these past 50 years. You see that, how to make that body-mind connection so that you can focus. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have to abstain from drugs and, you know, many other, you know, things that damage, you know, your prefrontal lobe and your brain. And because that's what happens. People drink too much or they smoke too much. They don't eat a proper diet, too much, too much sugar. They don't have problems focusing. You see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a holistic approach. Two. So, so could you share with us why this time of year, this winter solstice is so important? And, and I know from the very beginning of my experience in Osiris that you had implemented that practice long before people were talking about the winter solstice. It's the first I heard of 40 something years ago. Um, what led you to the discovery of this time of year and what is the meaning of this time of year? Well, you know, uh, my attention was piqued through the I Ching. You know, when I was reading through and I looked at a 20 volt hexagram, mm -hmm. which corresponds to the winter solstice, and the instructions it gives that it's time to now return, you know, and it just simply says return to the proper way. 
And when I meditated on it for many, many months, you know, practically you know, several years, I kept coming back to it. And all the research led me to the understanding. And then when I came across the committee reference, head men, you know, the ceremony of, of um, yielding mm -hmm. to God, you see that? So it was a confluence of things that the answer is in this, not only the seven volumes of the Medinata series, but my Qigong books and my Tree of Life meditation books, and all the books that I wrote, you know, were different, you know, mental, you know, exercises, to, you know, to mm -hmm. arrive at the understanding. And, and the thing is, is that the winter solstice is one of the, you could call it the most profound time of the year. Mm -hmm. You see that? And, and if let me, I like to decode the word, right? <clears throat> you know, soul is Latin for the sun. And this is a standstill, specia, to stand still. So soul's this meaning the sun stands still. You're with me? Okay. And um, meaning that when the sun is not standing still, you have light, you have warmth. So that from June 25th, okay, every day, you know, there's more light, more sunlight, more daylight, more warmth. You see that? And uh, I, I'm sorry, from June 25th, the sunlight, the right, and the warmth is decreasing. Mm -hmm. You see that? And to the point now, you know, like on June 25th, you know, it was still bright, 8, 8 p.m. And now at 4 p.m., it's dark. Mm -hmm. You see that? Meaning that from June 25th, Till December the 21st, you know, the, the, the daylight period is shortening. It's getting shorter and shorter and shorter. You know, it's getting colder and colder and so on. So the thing is, is that uh, the winter solstice meaning that the shortening of daylight stands still. Mm -hmm. You get it there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> still. And then now the lengthening of daylight, okay, uh, begins on December 25th. You know, and the Christians have a saying that the light of the world has been reborn. Right. You know? But when we look at, at, at light and understand and study light, the bio psychology of light, we find that the light interacts very profoundly with the hypothalamus within us and the pineal gland. You see that? And, uh, and, and, and it affects consciousness in a manner, not only consciousness, but our ability to reprogram the mind and the soul and the things of nature. And the thing, because once we program, you know, our mind, our psyche, meaning, and the psyche of the soul, it gets programmed by about February and March, meaning that a program is established and that program is gonna run through the rest of the year until you reprogram it at the next winter solstice, you with me? Yeah. You see that. So when you know the, the when that light is reborn on December twenty fifth, you see, and be, and begins to grow through January, you have the opportunity to participate, to take active participation in the renewal of your mind, your soul, your spirit, and your body. You see that. Everything breaks down and has to be renewed. You see that, you know, we have anabolism and catabolism. You know, you get up in the day, you use the body, you break things down, you use resources up, and you got to renew it at night when you sleep. So winter solstice is the night. But it's not the four days. Those mm -hmm. four days from 21 to 24, you cannot renew anything in four days. You need, at the very least, 21 consecutive days of intense work. Hmm. If you want to participate in the renewal of your being, you have to go through an intense program. You see that? With meditation, yoga, internal exercises, you know, prayer, you know, living truth, you know, eating clean for those 21 days at least. And if you can do, if you can do 42 days, meaning two 21 day cycles, so much better. You see that? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the, 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 the Western media has given 
people experience at the winter solstice is about a one day pagan dancing and shouting and chanting the sun up. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there's so much trivia mm -hmm. and ignorance that is taking control, you know, over the teachings that people are supposed to have. And the world is paying dearly for it. Mm -hmm. You see that because you know in the, the, there's a residual memory from ancient times where you know the the renew the renewal of the year, which people think is January the first, is really December twenty fifth, right? But people have this residual memory that um, they need to make a new a resolution, you know, and a pledge to do better, mm -hmm. to change their mind, to change their habits, mm -hmm. to visualize, you know, improvements in their life. Um, but what do they do? They write on a piece of paper, paper and burn it, or I don't know what, there are all kinds of things that people write their resolution down on a piece of paper and do something with it, throw it in a river, I don't know. No, you got to meditate. You got to go through some heavy <laughs> psychological, you know, reconditioning process for those, you know, and you need, and it has to be guided by somebody who understands the psyche, the mind, the spirit. And that's why people year after year don't get better. Their life don't get better. And that's one of the reasons why we, Osada said, is around for 50 years next year. You see that? Because when our people, you know, um, come to this point of the year, they just don't, you know, write them a resolution. This is, this is science of looking at yourself, objectifying the, the perception of your person and you know, your, your mind, you know, so you don't sweep things on the the rug or the bed or whatever, yeah. Yeah. and so on. You see that. So yeah, you know. So that's the definition of the winter solstice. You see that. It's so a check, check of, it's, a, it's a it's a time of meditation, right? And a lot of people find it difficult to meditate. They get distracted. They have monkey mind. They call it. They you know they can't focus their thoughts. What is it about um, what you're teaching and what's in this course? Uh, that will address that? Or is it difficult for people to do? Well, like I said, you know, um, the mind, as the mind is moving around, you know, thoughts coming in, right? Mm -hmm. Thoughts coming in and coming, going out, right? That's an involuntary, that belongs to the involuntary part of the nervous system. You see that? And to try to will, to will yourself, to ignore the thoughts, is like trying to will your blood pressure to go down. Mm -hmm. You're using the wrong part of your being to accomplish a certain task. You see that? So there's a special way of breathing that automatically, you know, lowers the brain wave rate. You know, when, when I'm awake, when we're awake, right, our brain is racing at a rate of about 23, you know, beats per second. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. For us to now fall asleep, you know, we have to go down to about 13, from 23 to about 13, between 7 and 13 beats per second. We call that alpha, mm -hmm. the alpha brain wave pattern. When we awake, you know, we're in beta, 23 brain waves per second or hertz or whatever. You see that? But the problem is, is that when you drop the brain wave activity from 23 down to 13 or 12 or 11 or 10, you know, that is usually associated with sleep. Mm -hmm. You see that? So what happens is that when you drop the brain wave rate, your will, okay, also drops. So you're not trying to use a weak will to control a process that the will doesn't control anyhow. So it's not a monkey mind. The mind is just doing what and functioning the way it was supposed to, it was made to function. You see that you have to breathe a certain way, use certain technical breathing techniques, okay? That the Hindus call pranayama. You see that in ancient Egypt, there's a whole book written called the Book of Breathings. You see that, mm -hmm. okay? So the whole thing is that you have to learn to breathe in a special way, which will automatically, you know, drop the involuntary functions. Not only will it shut the mind down, it will shut the they will lower the blood pressure, lower the heart rate. You see that? 
mm -hmm. lower the metabolism and therefore promote healing. You see what I'm talking about? Right. And the thing, though, is that but you want to do that without falling asleep. So how do I lower my my brain waves from 23 beats per second to, let's say, 10 beats per second without falling asleep? Aha. Uh -huh. It's a special way of breathing, and we teach it in this course. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. You see that? Wonderful. Yes, sir. So we taught it for, for 49 years, as Osada said, and that's why... You know, the society members have benefited so much because, and it's very simple. You just have to understand it. And as simple as it is, the majority of people out there teaching meditation don't know it. Mm. They don't know it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are what are the full components of the of the course? Um, what can people expect when they <clears throat> when they sign up for the course? Uh, we do we do have this winter solstice available for the first time. Um, on an on-demand platform on at TowieSolstice.com, and uh, it's only forty-nine dollars for the whole program. Can you describe um, what exactly you are putting into this uh, into the course? Well, there are going to be fifteen modules for lessons. Hmm. You see that, which will be lectures explaining first and foremost, you know, your your being. You first have to understand yourself and your faculties. You see that, okay? I, you know. I cannot teach you to use, to meditate properly if you don't understand something about your mind and your psyche and your breathing, right? So there are lessons about that. Then the lessons on how to meditate, you know, there's a mantra that we're using to activate the part of your spirit. You see that, which is the dwelling place of your divinity. Because, you know, this, you know, there's a module that, the, that that helps you to understand your union with God. You mm -hmm. see, when the new year comes, that's the September 25th, not January 1st, okay? When the new year comes, you, you're going to want to make resolutions to do better. You're going to have pledges and visions of improving your life. The number one agent for you to do well in your life is God. You have to unite with God. God is omnipotent, all powerful, all knowing, and present in everything, in every person, and to that nature. And you need God's help. You see, success with spirituality is not about oh, your your your, your chakra being so powerful, even though you got you got to clean your chakra up for sure. But all of that is to help you unite with God. Mm -hmm. You see, God is the agent of success and well-being. So there are. You know, uh, 12 meditation modules, okay, in this class that helps you to go through, clean out and connect back with the 11 faculties of your spirit. You see that? Because, you know, you have, you, 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 your, your spirit has 11 faculties in it, and they must all be on the case. They must all be involved in your efforts to renew yourself. You see that? Right. Because, you see, the spirit is what controls everything in your life. You see that? Mm -hmm. So there, there are these modules, guided meditation, okay, for each of the 11 faculties of your life, you know, tied in with your resolution, resolution, visions, and pledges for the new year. Okay. You see that? Because if you, do, if you do not factor in, you know, the role of each of faculty of the spirit, you know, in your life, you're going to make... Uh, pledges and, and resolutions that don't take all the factors, you know, into consideration. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. For example, you know, one of the, the, the master faculties I'm in, that's the part of your spirit that, um, you know, is a source of, you know, spiritual peace, which people, some people confuse spiritual peace with relaxation. You know, mm -hmm. like, like if I go get a massage, you know, um, I go, you know, in a jacuzzi or I go to the beach and I'm all relaxed or whatever, you know, I'm peaceful. No, we're talking about a state of being where the worst thing can be happening around you and you don't feel pain. The worst thing could have happened to you, losses or, or whatever, and you don't suffer. You don't, you don't, you're not assaulted by the pain. And why wouldn't you want that? Because, you see, once you know how to survive 
you know, uh, the pain of suffering, you are a great treasure to the world. You can help others. You have something phenomenal to give to the world. You see that? Mm -hmm. So this is the first part of the spirit that you have to learn. You're not going to master it, you know, in this you know, course here, but you, you, you get started of learning how to apply it to preparing for the things you want to accomplish so that when you move to accomplish these things, they are, you know, that, that faculty is awake and helping you because when you go on, go into this world to accomplish things, there are setbacks, right? That's right. <laughs> there are setbacks. So what are you going to do? You're going to get angry. You're going to be afraid. You're going to worry. All of these things lower your, 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 your vitality. All of these things drop your IQ. They drop your performance quotient. Mm -hmm. So you cannot afford to be, a, you gotta be at peace. But we talk about an inner peace. You see that? And that inner peace cannot be brought about through sermonizing and lecturing or whatever. You have to put, you have to awaken a certain part of the spirit called Amen, part of the spirit. Mm -hmm. you see okay. And it's a, it's a demand and supply principle. If you demand, for this piece manifests itself in a certain way, the spirit will supply it. You see that? Right. And it goes through the same thing. So these are things, you know, these 50, these 11 laws of the spirit, you know, are the 10 sphere plus n of, of the Kabbalistic tree of life. Mm. Cool. So, you know, which was spoken about in the Hebrew and the Christian Bibles, but it was, it was fully elaborated in the various Kemetic spiritual teachings. Now, speaking of Kemet, Shechem Shechem, there's a lot of interest in, in ancient Kemet and the great accomplishments and so forth. Um, but also, when you speak about these faculties of the spirit, a lot of people come away with the idea that it is polytheistic, you know, there's all of these different gods and goddesses and and that this is something that you know is is against spiritual uh spirituality or religion or what have you how, how do you how do you explain the the nature of the comedic um spiritual system and well, is, is this course something that people who may not be may be ascribing to a different uh religious uh, persuasion can still benefit from or, or will be able to harmonize with whatever their, their way of life is? First of all, the problem is in the definition of the word God. You mm -hmm. see that? You know, if we, if we speak about the, the God as the one supreme being, right? Meaning that the, the, there is a conscious, intelligent, powerful entity that is responsible for the universe and everything in it. That's God Almighty, Supreme mm -hmm. Being. We find that in the ancient comedic teachings. It's called Nebuchadnezzar, the Lord of all. You see that? Okay? What you have to understand, you have to ask yourself, who brought me the teachings of ancient Egyptian spirituality? Europeans. That didn't understand the teachings. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. They looked at the teachings through their own Western eyes. So what, you know, it, it, the Supreme Being, the one God, the, 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 the God Almighty, never here, okay? And it can be, which most, and, and, and hardly, the only Egyptologist that, that showed any awareness of the Egyptian Lord of all, the, the, you know, the Supreme Being, was Wallace Budge. You see that? What the European scholars want to call e Egyptian gods, you know, if you go to Kabbalah, if you go to the Bible, if you go even to the Christian Bible, you know, you will find the same principles, okay, that are called angels mm -hmm. and archangels. Mm -hmm. You see that? For example, you know, what they, there's a, a, a faculty of the spirit. It's like you're, your physical body, you have the brain, which is the master command center, right? Mm -hmm. but then you have all of these other intelligences in the body responsible for subtask. Yeah, the body, your, your physical body is just not one 
an agent responsible for every single task. There are subtasks and subagents. These subagents, you see, in the Christian and Hebraic and Muslim tradition are called angels. Mm. You see? So you have the supreme being, you know, functioning through, you know, uh, sub intelligences. Everything in this world is that way. You see that? Mm -hmm. Meaning the liver has its, it's like, we, okay, let's, let's back up. The large intestine is considered second brain. True. Oh. Meaning that the large intestine is responsible for a lot of your thoughts and feelings and decisions. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's still a sub brain underneath the brain on the top of your head. <laughs> so the thing that you got to understand is that, you know, there's a, a, a system, the, 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 the body, the psych, the mind, it's a system, uh, system entity, meaning one commanding intelligence administering the body through a multiplicity of in, agents working together. So in some religion, they call them archangels to enable them to, to hold on to the, I, to the concept of having, having a supreme being, you know, working through intelligences. But then they deny the Africans, you know, and the comedic people of the same, you know, reality. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. see that? So right. if you go in there, you find that Neb Erchir, the Lord's supreme being. And when you go into the, 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 the religious books, of Egypt, which the scholar Egyptologists will tell you do not exist, they, they don't even recognize Egypt as a religion, mm -hmm. ancient Egypt as a religion. They even recognize the Kemetic books as scriptures. We, the Kemetic people, wrote more scriptures than any other religion on the face of the earth, mm -hmm. but did not recognize the spiritual scriptures. You see that? Okay. So the thing is, is that when you go to these books, okay. These, you know, by European scholars, you see, things are hidden, twisted to make the African man look primitive mm. and et cetera, et cetera. There is a one supreme being, Neb Erche, the Lord. Neb Erche means the Lord of all. You see that? And in one of the books called The Book of Knowing the, the Manifestations of Ra, you see that? In that which speaks about creation, it says, in the beginning, the Supreme Being was all alone. There was not a second with mm -hmm. him. You see that? And to become a Supreme, to become a creator, the Supreme Being first had to create, not light, but the concept of law. Mm -hmm. You see that? And upon the concept of law, the Supreme Being created law, the, the, the substance and body of law, and therefore made everything in this world subject to law, including itself. Mm. You see that? So you know, and th this book is, is a thousand years old. Mm -hmm. You see, it's called, it's, it's a book of knowing the, the, the um, transformations of Ra. It's an old scripture, thousand years old in the Bible and the, the, the Torah and the, the Christ, Christian books, the, the, the um, Taoist, you know, scriptures, it's much, it's, it's precedes all of it. Mm -hmm. You see that? No, so we, we do not work, as a matter of fact, you know, what the European says called Egyptian gods that we are worshiping, nobody worships these, and they are faculties. You cultivate the faculties. One of these faculties, let's say, call it hetero, right? Okay, you don't worship it at all. It's, it's, it's your imagination, your mm. artistic creativity, your social harmonizing ability. Okay, so when you sit down to meditate on that room, you are cultivating your ability to be social, to be harmonious, to be talent, creative, artistic. You're not worshiping. You see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not involved in a process of bowing down, kowtowing, and asking for favors. Mm -hmm. You see that? So while you bring that point up, Shechem Shechem, and I know you spoke about becoming closer to God, oneness with God, what, from the comedic perspective, is the purpose of this world? I mean, with so much destruction and, and, and poverty and uh, suffering in the world, you know, why, what, from the comedic perspective, is the purpose of all of, of, all of this? 
Well, from the comedic perspective, the narrative is that God creates the world in order to come into the world as a member of the world to experience and enjoy life. Because you see, without a world, God cannot experience, you know, life and enjoy life. So to en experience and enjoy life, he creates the world. You see, and then a God enters the world through man to, to be able to experience itself as God and enjoy its life on earth as God, it creates man. So every man and woman has the responsibility of, you know, perfecting their divinity mm -hmm. to serve as a vessel for God to come into this world and allow God to enjoy its creation. Oh. <laughs> Meaning that, you know, we, we, we are making a mess of this world to so-called enjoy a life that we didn't create. <laughs> We're making a mess of it and acting as if we made the world and the world is here for us. No, the world is made by God, you know, and when God, when you work at perfecting your spirit and God comes through you, you will enjoy your life, you know, at an extremely higher level that you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Meaning that, you know, the perspective, the view of what life is all about is different from culture to culture. You see that. You know, you sit down with a Muslim, you sit down with a Taoist, you know, you sit down with a, you know, Jewish person, Chinese, you know, they all come from different cultural view of the world. You see that. So I just gave you the comedic view of the world. You see that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have a responsibility to, uh, to live up to that divine uh, spark within me. I have a responsibility to fulfill my divine self-image so that God can come through me. And when God comes through me, then you see God can enjoy its life, its experience of life. And in the process, then my life will be meaningful and good. Uh, I can have a good life without God being, in, being part of it. Right. So some people have said that ancient committee and the Egyptian African people are backwards or whatever, they envision and seek a life of success and well-being without God. But there's a lot, there's a lot of lip service to God, you know? Right. There's a lot of lip service, you know? Um, no, you have to be there. You see that? And you need training. Mm. You know, we, we, you know the, the, we do not malign any other religion. We do not speak bad of it religions or whatever, but the Western man has spoken very ill of, you know, African spirituality wherever, you know, he finds it. Right. You see that. So if you're just joining us, we want to welcome you. Uh, we're in the middle of a wonderful conversation with Shekhar Shekhar Ra Unneframan the first, who is the uh, author of the wonderful Medunitaire series, as well as 40 other uh, works on spirituality, on health, on family, uh, many subjects, Qigong, and he is uh, sharing with us a course that he's put together for us to be able to observe properly this holy time of year. So if you're just joining us, someone shared this with you, uh, you can go over to, see if I can do this, TawiSolstice.com. And you'll be able to sign up for a wonderful class. It's 15 modules. Uh, when you come into the course, you'll see there's some five or six modules now. And the modules are being released as we move forward in the process. Because as he says here on the site, the four days of the winter solstice are not the entirety of the sacred observance, but the beginning of 21 days of spiritual work dedicated to the renewal of your divinity. And he's made this class available to us for only $49. It is on demand, which means you could start tonight. You could start whenever you click the button and get your class. Uh, you'll be able to get a email with your uh, credential, your username and password, and you'll go into our online learning platform and all the uh, information is available to you right away. So Shechem Shechem, we have 
a number of people on Facebook, uh, some people on Twitter with us. And I just want to let you know, I want to welcome you all. Um, I want to let you know that we can see your comments. And at some point soon, we will uh, entertain some questions. I know some of you, this is the first time you might have had a chance to had some have some time with uh, Shechem or Shechem Ram Nefar Amen. And uh, you may have gone through some of his works or classes and have some questions, some burning questions that would relate to what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about this sacred time of year of the winter solstice. So Shechem and Shechem, how do we know that this is the time uh, of the solstice? Well, there, there, are, there are three major motions of the earth in relationship to the sun, right? The earth revolves around its axis, right? And a, a complete revolution gives us the 24 hours of the day, right? Uh, the earth circles around the sun, okay? Period of 12 months, 365 days and a quarter, right? Mm -hmm. But then the pendulum-like motion where the northern hemisphere tilts towards the sun, okay? and then tilts towards this, uh, away from the sun, which gives us the seasons and things of that nature. You see that, okay? So when the earth reaches its southernmost tilt, okay, tilting position, we get the winter solstice in the Northern hemisphere. When the sun, you know, moves, when the earth inclines towards the sun, Okay, we get summer in the uh, northern hemisphere and winter in the southern hemisphere. I don't know if I said that right. So the whole thing is, you know, um, you know, those are the solely lunar planetary things that tells us this is the soul space. You with me? But like I said, it's only a marker of telling you the year ends on December the 24th and begins on December the 25th. You see that? The, the time to sit down and do the renewal, spiritual renewal uh, exercises to renew your mind and your sight is, you know, 21 consecutive days anywhere from, you know, the beginning, I mean, December 25th, okay? Or even before that until, you know, um, before the end of November of, of January. And by the way, you know, if you ever wonder why the Chinese celebrate New Year in February, even though they know that the winter solstice, you know, December 25th is re the real, you know, beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. That's because the Chinese, they, you know, they have a tradition of special ceremonies and cultivations that they do as individuals and as a social group in December and January, and that is why they celebrate the new moon, I mean, the, 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 the new year in February. You see that? Right. Okay. So um, we have a couple of questions. I, I did also want to ask Shechem or Shechem, you know, given the time that we're in, uh, there was a report that came out that I believe some 60% of adults in the United States are experiencing symptoms of mental health uh, problems, anxiety, depression, and so forth. You know, after these years of uh, a pandemic and lockdown and social isolation and uh, economic, uh, you know, trauma, a lot of people find it difficult to believe that they can, they can be at peace, <laughs> that they can, that they can uh, handle this in a, a spiritual way. Will the course help people who are suffering from anxiety, from depression, from a reaction to uh, very difficult circumstances in life? Well, all I can say to you, I've been teaching this course for the past 40 years. You see that? And, um, and from the experience, the testimonials of people, and at some point, you know, you can make those testimonies available. You see that? Okay, uh, people have been able to help themselves. 
You see that? And the reason is that, you know, uh, this increase in mental, you know, uh, problems, you know, mental, lack of mental well-being comes from lack of training, lack of spiritual training, mm -hmm. you know? Um, for example, you know, we, we, we turn on the news and we find that there was some mass shooting and or some, you know, some senseless murder of somebody. And the newscaster comes and, and is and, and is interviewing, you know, a family member, and the, the newscaster says, Oh, this is so horrific, I know you'll never get over this. You know, so we have these people in high positions and education seizing people. You see that? With wrong ideas. You see, what do you mean you know that you'll never get over this? Mm. Or you, you understand that? There are techniques, there are ways of thinking. And, and the thing is, is that people try to think to change their mindset and their emotional habits through information. No, you have to go into an altered state of awareness called, you know, through something called meditation, <laughs> which most people don't really know how to do because they never get past what they call the monkey mind because they're trying to control the monkey mind with the will. No, you control the monkey mind with the breathing. Mm. You see that? I taught a course, a course years ago at La Salle University, you know, um, the evening division, where I taught a, a, a meditation course for high blood pressure. And in two weeks of work, you know, and most of these were older people. They came back and they were like, wow, this works, man. The first day they tried it, blood pressure dropped so many points. And after two weeks, they were able to control their blood pressure you know, with the breathing and meditation technique. Mm. You see that? So the key is breathing a certain way. And, and we teach it in this course, as we teach it in our, all of our courses, because meditation is the linchpin, you know, of the work that you have to do. They cannot change your habits through just information. You have to, you know, shut the thinking down and deal with certain visualizations you have to <clears throat> you have to awaken certain psychical faculties and spiritual faculties and awaken and strengthen the prefrontal lobe through certain you know breathing exercises and so on wow so once again i want to welcome you uh, this is the introduction of the online on demand tawi solstice program uh, it says 21 days. The 21 days is what we are learning and being prepared and trained to observe. 21 days to cultivate our divinity, to make an impact on our lives. And Shechem Shechem, you, 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 you're releasing this to the public at an incredibly inexpensive um, price point. I mean, if it's 14, 15 modules. Uh, what, what is the reason for that? Well, you know, we have always done, we have always functioned this way in the past 49 years, right? Two. Right? Lots of people came to the Southern State and got counseling for family and help, didn't pay a dime. Some gave a donation, some just simply gave thanks, and that was all right. You know, a lot of classes I taught for the past 49 years were either free or a nominal fee. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay? And um, so the thing is, is that uh, because... I wanted to make sure that the spiritual teachings got to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. You see that, mm -hmm. okay? And and the, and the, you know, when I first got started, the young man says to me, you know, your teachings are good, but people will not respect it because you're not charging enough. And he went out of business uh, a year later, and that was about some uh, forty years ago. Mm -hmm. We still here. Right. <laughs> yes. By the way, are you going to speak about the affiliate? Yeah. Okay. Well, I well, I, I just want to say that we really appreciate that and everything that you've done uh, to demonstrate what it is to be a person that is centered on spirituality and not just the dollar. Um, but you've also uh, created a win-win program with this in an effort to get as many people as possible to uh, to be able to change their lives. So you have a referral program 
And if you're just hearing about this, the class is $49 one time, $49 for the entire 15 modules. And if you refer someone to the class, you're able to earn $9 uh, of that $49. So you could actually refer five or six people and your class is free. And for those of you that have a, uh, a yoga group, a Qigong group, a martial arts club, uh, a, a book club or whatever, and you have 20, 30, 40 people with you who would benefit from the information, uh, you're able to also empower those people to receive a $9 uh, you know, referral fee when they uh, bring a student to the class and you would receive $3 for that as well. So it's an opportunity that's structured in a win-win way where uh, people can be you know, motivated to share from, uh, spirit, from spiritual reasons, but also uh, to generate some income as well. Uh, so that's just a, a great program. So Shek Shek, with your uh, approval, I would like to see if we have some questions online. Of course, yes. So we have, we have a question from Instagram. Is, you want to speak up and say? <clears throat> so we have a question from the Instagram Live. Is every solstice the same, or do the placements of the different planets alter the energies and approach to each winter solstice? Well, that's a great question. The the, the main all. The main planetary alteration, right, of the sources will be the position of the moon, position of the new moon and full moon, you see, that occurs around the solstice. You see that? And for example, because, you know, uh, lots of people don't know that there are 13 lunar months and not 12. You mm -hmm. see that? Okay, we, we have 12 solar months, you know, which is an artificial calendar, uh, calendar manipulation, but there are 13 lunar months because each month is less than 30 days. So the thing is that eventually we get a double, you know, um, full moon for a particular moon. You see that? So this year we had a double, you know, uh, hetero, you know, part of the spirit being energized. So otherwise it would have been, you know, another part of the spirit being energized, you know, during this solstice. You see that? So um, according to the, because you know, the, the, the moon, you know, attracts, has a pull on the fluids in your body. You know, the, the, the moon, you know, gravitational pull on your body, which is about 70% water, that affects your, 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 your mind, your psyche, your ability to respond, you know, to spiritual messages, and things of that nature. So yes, the solely lunar planetary configurations around the different solstices will affect that. Thank okay, you. someone someone asked, and I can I can answer this because we did go over it. What is the format of the course, and how is it carried out? When does it start? What is the schedule? So the class is available now on demand. There will be fifteen modules in total uh, when it is released throughout the period of the solstice and the days to come. And the modules consist of uh, audio lectures to listen to, as well as written material. And there are exercises or assignments for your development of your journaling, your scripting, your, your, your affirmations or truisms and so forth. And, and guided meditations. And guided meditations, yes. You want to handle that one? Question is, um, should you or do you still fast with fresh fruits and veggies during the solstice using the herbs lavender, vervain, and skullcap? Great, great question. You know, we've been doing the solstice now for about 40 years, right? And it's been a learning experience because when we first started out, even to this present, 
There is no uh, information that has survived from antiquity on exactly how to, um, you know, go through the process of renewal. You see that? So we meditated years ago and, and came up with what we considered to make most sense. You know, and when we first started, we went, you know, like full, full force into um, esoteric teachings and things of that nature. So what happened was that we ended up subjecting too many people to austerities that did not match, you know, that was beyond, you know, their objectives. You see that? Mm -hmm. Meaning that, you know, uh, we were doing things, we did things, prohibitions or austerities and observances. We did it for everybody, but only some of them were for high priests or people who were on a very high powered mission, you see, or serious illness, you know. So um, we found through our, our own experience of, of uh, working with different peoples over a period of 40 years, it doesn't have to be that austere. You see that? Okay, you don't have to fast on, you know, um, actually, we never advocated fasting on vegetable juices. We said, take a lot of vegetable juices, okay, water down the fruit juice so you don't get too much sugar, okay, eat a lot of salads, a lot of raw food, okay, and things of that nature, you see that? And especially now that it's clear to us that the real uh, work is 21 consecutive days, you know, you don't want to do 21 consecutive days of austerities. Mm. You know, just eat well, eat clean. Above all though, you know, uh, abstain from empty, frivolous, you know, or, you know, mind, you know, distorting, you know, entertainment. You see that? You know, abstain, yeah, in other words, this is, this is a time when you need to reflect on your spirituality, reflect on the moral principles, reflect, you know, on spiritual principles and things of that nature, as opposed to be watching your favorite, you know, um, TV, you know, drama, whatever. Mm -hmm. you know, can you watch a basketball game? Of course, but, you know, at the same time, though, don't overdo it. And don't do it if you didn't do your meditation work, it's the work of the day. Mm -hmm. So there are priorities, you know, and things of that nature, you see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have another one. If a person has questions as they move through the course, where can they submit them? Well, it depends on the question. You want to take the rest or or on? Sure. And um, I think a, a subtopic of that question, Shek Meshekim, is will we be back <laughs> as we go through the class? You, you mean uh, uh, on this on this platform? Another webinar? Yes. But I told you earlier that I'm all for it. Okay. I'm all for it. All right. So uh, we're going to see how uh, often we can come together and and definitely those who go into the class through the class together will be supported. I just want to ask answer Stuart's question. Peace, Brother Stuart. He asked about what is a reliable guide in, in what is a reliable guide in determining what is the planetary influence for each lunar cycle. And I'm happy to report to you that our calendar will be delivered, uh, I believe, tomorrow. So we have a committed calendar that you're really going to love this year that lays out all of the lunar periods and gives you the Pautna Taru correspondences to the cycle. Thanks to the training and guidance of Shekham Shekham, we have that and it is it will be available in the next few days. Yeah, um, what we thought about the calendar, what, we thought, what we're saying here is that, you know, one of the most important spiritual print, uh, revelations from antiquity is that you know, uh, the laws of cycles, meaning that, let, let's talk about the, the, the cycles of the physical body. There's a time of day when your blood pressure is at its highest, a time when it's at its lowest. There's a time of day when you can memorize where your long-term memory works better, a time when your short-term memory works better, meaning that your long-term memory doesn't work at a high capacity all, all day long. So knowing the best time 
to work with a faculty is important. And that's what the, 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 the so-called partner calendar is about. Mm -hmm. You know, your, 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 creative, your creativity is not the same every month. You see that? Your reasoning is not the same every month. You know, your ability to be expansive and so forth is not the same. So the, 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 the ancient calendar, you know, uh, uh, identifies the cycles, you see that, of, um, you know, the, the waxing and waning of the powers of your mental and psychical abilities, which the Europeans call gods and goddesses. No, they are psychological faculties, mental faculties, you see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, another question. Is there any relationship between the Chinese 60 cycles and the winter solstice? Uh, say what kind of 60 cycles? Between the Chinese oh. 60 cycles and the winter solstice. Well, the, the, the 60 is a hexasesimal cycle, right? Okay, which the Chinese got from Kamet. You know, because the comedic people were the one that discovered, you know, um, what today we call um, the algorithms, you know, the tangents and cotangents and things of that nature. You see that? Okay, because, you know, we were the master astronomers and astrologers so that we were able to, um, to discover and map, you know, the longitudes and latitudes, you know, of planets and and uh, geometrical, you know, realities which use a hexadecimal system or system of, of, of um, angles and things of that nature. So the sixth cycle of the of the Chinese, okay, uh, does not tie in with the winter solstice, okay. It's 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 a, it's a um, Confluence of 12, uh, 12 uh, periods coming together with 10 periods, you know, in a number of uh, repeated coming together, you know, amounting to 60, 60 two hour period, 60 day period, 60 month period, and 60 year period. It has nothing to do with the winter solstice. Thank you. Someone said that they started the course, but it only had five modules. And that combines with another question, when would the guided meditation start? The guided meditation starts with module six. Mm -hmm. And the format of these guided meditations, someone was commenting that they needed MP3 as opposed to um, CDs, et cetera. No, there will be streaming. Streaming. Streaming the, 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 the music, the meditation music. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, you have another one? No. No? That's good. I think that's it. So people ask about the calendar. Well, that looks like um, most of the questions that we have here. Well, actually, someone's asking about where they can purchase your Maduna Tear books. Hmm. Well, I'm glad you asked that question because I want to say something, right? And, and, and at this point also, I want to offer my apologies for some of you who did not receive, have not received your orders, okay? What has happened to me even before the, um, the COVID pandemic came, which devastated my business, but what, what set me up for the devastation is that a lot of people, unfortunately African-American people as well, have heavily pirated my books. If you go on the internet, you're gonna find a whole lot of PD, P, free PDF readings of my books. You see that? Uh, E-book versions of my books, they're all unauthorized, they're all pirated, and over the past five years, it has cost me millions of dollars. Mm. It's kept me from, you know, uh, from doing my business, fulfilling my obligation to my clients, kept me from writing more books, you know, teaching as I would like to teach and so on. So um, we are hoping 
that uh, we will get enough affiliates to help move this you know, course through so that we can make some money to reprint the books that have been out of print for several years now. Mm -hmm. You see that I was devastated more so by the pandemic of plagiarizers, you know, and parrots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and unfortunately, many of these people call themselves African spiritual people. So if you see anybody, you know, on the social media or on the internet, you know, giving, you know, all, uh, access to PDF versions of my books, don't patronize it. You see that? I hope to make enough money to get me a good legal firm to shut all of this down, but that too is expensive. You got to pay up front to get good legal work to do that. Mm -hmm. But that's what's been happening. <clears throat> You know, the, you know, the piracy is tremendous. Not only my books, but the book of Professor Malefia Sante and other black authors who have devoted themselves to the salvation and upliftment of our people. Their books have been plagiarized heavily by individuals and groups calling themselves, you know, Africana and spiritual, you know, Kemetic this and that and so forth. So, but we will fix this. Which one was it? People are asking us. Maybe they can get it. So some people are asking about the calendar. Those will be made available shortly. And uh, just check back with the Facebook page of the group that uh, guided you here. Um, also, just in, in furthering what Shekham Shekham said, uh, the opportunity to spread this great knowledge and also be compensated, you know, is really a win-win. So we 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 hope that many of you uh, will become affiliates. It's free to become an affiliate. If someone um, referred you to the class tonight, to the to the uh, live stream, then you want to get back to that person so that they can benefit when you enroll in the class and um, ask them how ask them for a link through which you can become an affiliate and also get paid to spread this all over the country because this is what we all need is to be able to grow spiritually to meet the challenges of the world today. Uh, we have, someone is asking about the dates of the modules to be released. And when the, when the uh, guided meditation module is expected. Yeah, the first guided meditation module is expected tomorrow. And every day, two, two modules of the guided will be released. We're just simply cleaning up the recordings and, you know, editing the music to make sure everything is, flows well. Wonderful. Okay, well, we are at that time. Um, Shekham, Shekham, is there any other uh, message that you would like to relay before we... And the I just like to tell them to keep their ear, you know, to the wind, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all in favor of returning, you know, a couple more times next, starting next week, right, to answer questions that you, that I know you're going to, that's going to come up. You see that even if we were doing this in a personal manner, as a person to person, in person, you know, and private instruction, you will still have a lot of questions. And this is a very important time that I don't mind coming, but make sure your questions, you know, are part of the in the, the winter solstice course. You see that I'm not gonna be able to get into other questions that have nothing to do, you know, I'm making myself available to help you get the best from the course. You see that. So if you come with general questions about astrology and astronomy and other people's courses or whatever, I cannot I will not be able to help you with that. Wonderful. So yes, this um this session is recorded and it will be on the Facebook pages of our groups. I want to thank our community in Chicago, North Carolina. Uh we have Kentucky, Ohio, Oakland. Uh, we have the great uh, Nesut Mashtams uh, Hedaru Healing International Facebook page that also is uh, out during this event. 
as well as Osiris said PA. So we will be back. And uh, this recording will live on these pages, on all of these pages, so you can revisit it. And I'm sure we'll have a version that we can uh, email out. So I want to thank everyone. And in the comedic spiritual tradition, we give a greeting of power, a mantra that we, uh, we share to wish Shechem Shechem peace, blessings, and much vigor and vitality. Uh, I might be getting in trouble, but he shared with me that there's at least three other books that he's writing right now. So he has a lot of work to do, and uh, the world needs it. So let us all say a Harak to Shechem or Shechem Ra'u Nefarmen, Hetepu, peace and blessings to everyone, and we will see you again soon. Thank you.